You're watching The Breakfast Club. Morning, everybody. It's DJ NV Angela Yee, Charlamagne the God. We are The Breakfast Club. We got a special guest in the building. Brother Love is here. Damn. Yeah. <laughs> Just call me Love. Just, Just call love, me love now. Just Love now. Just love. I know it changes yeah. according to your mood, so yeah, you're in yeah. a love mood. He's in a love mood. I just I just needed to simplify it. I make things so complicated sometimes and I'm already black, so I'm already a brother. So you just you don't need to say that. You can just hit me with the love. I have told people I feel like Diddy's energy has shifted. Yeah. Cause I cause I always used to get bad vibes from you. But mm -hmm. now it seems like you just in a in a different zone. Yeah. I used to always get bad vibes from you also. That's what I thought. I said the same thing. I said, yeah. I said yeah. maybe it was me. I said maybe I changed. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah, no, no. I, th I think I think we both have changed. We all uh, are evolving. And, um, you know, the, the the energy, it takes time to really kind of connect and understand the power of it. You know, you can speak about it. I spoke about it for years. Um, but, you know, I've had my ups and downs. If I'm going through something or if I'm not feeling a cat or whatever it is, but now I don't feel any of that, you know what I'm saying? Like, you know, I just I just feel love, you know, even for my enemies, you know. Life is beautiful. Now, I felt very old this weekend. I had a birthday party, me and Envy, and your son was hosting with us. Which one? <laughs> Justin Combs okay. in the club. <laughs> I was like, what is going on? I've been in the club with Diddy, yeah. and now I'm in the club with Justin Combs. Maybe it's time to hang it up. <laughs> yeah. Do you I, party? Does it feel weird partying with your son? Um... No, it doesn't. It doesn't really feel weird because it's it's important for me to make sure that I show them how to move out here. Mm -hmm. You know, so it's more that I don't hang out with them a lot. If I have, you know, have a club date or something like that, then then we'll rock together. But um, you know, yeah, I'm not trying to really just be partying and. In the club with my kids. I be seeing you trying but, to keep up though. Y'all be doing your dance <laughs> battles on Instagram. Yeah. Yeah. You be icing after those? Cause I saw you do a kick one time. I said, yeah. I know that hurt, Diddy. No, 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 no. Dancing is my thing. You know what I'm saying? That 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 keeps my spirit and everything right. Yeah. I think it's cool though to, to, to see your kids in the club. The only thing is is like when I see your sons in the club or even Clue's daughter in the club, I feel like I'm dad now. I be watching too much. And you like, gotta watch what you do. But I be feel like I be watching them too much. Be like, yo, watch him over there. I'm looking to see what he's looking at you. Like, I just feel too much of a, I gotta protect now. You know what I mean? Yeah. I just feel that way when I'm in the spot. Yeah, nah, I mean, you know, for me, it's just really showing them how to really be careful in the clubs, mm -hmm. what to look out for, making sure that, you know, they, they know how to really move around and stay on point. Absolutely. You know, and so that, that takes some teaching sometimes. So you gotta go out in the field with them. But, you know, I try to make sure, like, if I'm going to this spot, make sure y'all going to the other spot. <laughs> and we usually meet up back home. We usually collaborate back at home if we're having a celebration. What, if you, what if you walked in the club and you saw your boys with a, with another vodka at the table and not Chirac? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, they have a problem. They wouldn't be able to come back home. <laughs> Oh, well, then I'll, well, yeah. I'll leave this part of the story out. Don't no. start that. Don't do that. <laughs> Don't do that now. He asked him why. He was good Don't do that to me, man. Justin, we call it Justin. <laughs> change, I, change the locks, y'all. <laughs> but it has to feel good to see what a great job you did raising your kids. Oh, you man. Know? One no. of your sons, he's modeling for Dolce & Gabbana and rapping, and your daughters are beautiful. We saw the video of you giving one of your daughters a dog, you know, and yes. how she reacted, which was really sweet. I mean... It's incredible seeing them grow up and actually be nice human beings and actually have their head on straight. Because, you know, it didn't have to end up that way. Mm -hmm. When you think about a lot of the other celebrity families, you know, it's, 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 it gets a little weird sometimes, you know. And um, they haven't been acting weird yet. And <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? And, you know, we all go through our things. But, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm very, very proud of them, you know, I'm very, very proud of them as men and also the girls, the way that they're growing up and just the way that they treat people mm -hmm. is, is is just like outstanding. They now, got Christian, that 90s energy though, the boys. They don't got that like new school, everything a little too tight energy going on. You know what I'm saying? Like they, 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 they do still 90s with They do a little bit of both. They go back and forth, I think. But a lot of their stuff, they're new. Yeah, yeah I, mean, I mean, what they do, they, they definitely keep their New York swag with it. Cause mm -hmm. you know, out in LA, the jeans could definitely get too tight. The shirts could get too tight. You know what I'm saying? So they, I think they've mastered they fit and still, you know, um, people know that they from New York. And that, and, that, and that's important to them. All right. Yeah. Now, I see Christian got a, he's been dating a girl for two years. 
what's that conversation like now? You know, <laughs> it's, it's getting a little serious. It's getting a little older. And this is where you started going a little yeah. wild. Yeah, I was like, nah, don't play yourself. <laughs> you don't play yourself. We're not about to be Puff Granddaddy. That's not happening. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? And all everything's on pause. Um, I went. I went a little further, but you know, I don't, I don't want. You know, <laughs> you know, I want to respect the his girlfriend's privacy. But um, you know, I sat down, had a conversation with them, and um, we all on the same page. I hope. <laughs> Tell them where to make sure they protect themselves, make sure they don't. You don't want no babies. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, not right now, you know? Right. Now, I got to ask, on Ellen, you said you were engaged. I ain't finished yet. Uh, <laughs> you ain't finished with babies? No, I ain't finished yet. You said you, you were engaged for four yeah, hours. Yeah, without a doubt, I love children. You said you were engaged for four hours. You don't love children? I, I, I love them. I got two. You know, I'm trying to get a boy. So, yeah, I got two both, girls. They're both trying to get more. Yeah, <laughs> there we go. I'm trying to get ten. It's a race. Oh, I ain't Gosh. doing ten. I ain't <laughs> you really want ten for real? Um... I could go to eight without a problem. I could go to eight Can't real stop. quick. <laughs> Can't stop, won't stop. So how would that work, though? Would you have them with your current woman? Or are you bringing some new troops? Uh, I would uh, hope so. We, we I don't say, know. Hey, hold on. Let me go do this on the side. <laughs> don't get this man in trouble again. <laughs> the African king right here. He might want more than one wife. <laughs> don't get this man in trouble again, man. <laughs> I am a king. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but I'm not doing that, though. You know, um, you know, whatever's supposed to happen in the future is gonna happen, but that's uh. that's something that I want. Mm -hmm. Now you were engaged for four hours. And I would hours only have it. Said. I would only have it with my girl, of, of course. course. Just okay, to let's make clarify. sure. Let's make it sure. Exactly. <laughs> you don't want to clarify. Yeah. Last time we got Diddy in trouble, I don't want no problems. Yeah. I think I got in trouble for Diddy in trouble. <laughs> so was that? Kathy? Oh yeah, I played myself last time. Like, what I did I do? Talk about was this that? Seventy thirty. Seventy thirty. Yeah, ladies. That once again. Contract? Once again, I mean, I, I've got your responses. <laughs> Is 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 noted. Every everybody, yep. you know, Diddy does live a little, truth, does man. a little bit too much, right? You know, sometimes. So the, yeah, the seven. I tried it the seventy thirty. It's not working. It's not. So where you at now? Ninety ten. <laughs> yeah, ninety on so, the other other side. I had to make up for the <laughs> seventy thirty. So you can admit that was a bad contract. Oh man, that was a, that was a, a bad a bad day. Something that shouldn't have came out my mouth. That was three, four years ago. You grown since, man. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. No, 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 no. I'm good. I'm good now. Believe me, I'm good. But that day, <laughs> that the other we all been there. <laughs> now back to my question. Okay. Yeah. You said you were engaged for four hours when you were on Ellen. Mm -hmm. How did you get out of an engagement? Like, did you just say I was just kidding? Like, how does it not happen? Like, how do you moonwalk out of that? Hmm. I acted like it didn't happen. You was drunk. I didn't even act like, I mean, I was definitely, you know, in the spirit. <laughs> but, you know, the next day I just, you know what I'm saying? I just, you know, treated it like we had a great night last night. You know? She and never bought it back up? up? Hmm? She never bought it back up? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <you> <laughs> <laughs> I mean, she brought it back up, and I was just like, you know, maybe we should just, like, wait a little while. Yeah. What? Uh. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. So, uh, Diddy, why I can't you... tell y'all which girlfriend, but you know, it it definitely happened. How many girlfriends you got, Diddy? Man, we man. only know one. Man, I, no, I'm talking about in the past. In the past, this oh, didn't happen right you, now. You, that was okay, okay, yeah, okay. yeah, yeah. You just assumed it was, uh, it was Cassie. Mm -hmm. I understand. Right. Yeah. yeah, but I was just telling the story about just a wild night that happened. You that know, is a wild years, night. Boy. Years, years, years. You lucky you weren't engaged, but it got married. I was in Vegas. Oh, you were? Yeah, yeah. Oh, see, that's nothing. That's a good lie to say in Vegas. Let's go get married right now. That ain't nothing. In Vegas? I mean, I got, I got proposed to. Oh, they proposed oh, to you? you did? Yeah. And I said yes. <laughs> <laughs> what? I said yes. That's what she get. Did she, she have a ring? Huh? Did she have a ring? No, nah, we didn't have no ring on us. That was the good thing. No, 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 no. Definitely. She definitely had a ring, and she definitely put it on me, but it wasn't. <laughs> it was like just... It was like um, one of her rings that she that, that I guess I complimented her on. You know yeah. what I'm saying? Nice yeah. ring. Well, yeah. it's yours. We're getting married. <laughs> Hold on. Did you at least smash it that night? Yeah, yeah. Okay, okay. so you told her what you had to say. No, no, no. You told her what you had to say to get the, the draw. No, no, no. We was in a relationship. This is not coming out of oh, nowhere. Oh, got you, got you, yeah. got you. Come on, man. <laughs> He's painting you as a savage over there. Oh, man. <laughs> <laughs> King Diddy. <laughs> King Love. <laughs> 
the you can't say the no polygamist. When you, <laughs> nah, you can't I'm not. Say no, yo. when your girlfriend proposes to you, right? That's awkward. Is yeah, that, yeah, yeah, yeah. But it it was I'm it was just all in the spirit of fun. I'm just right. you know I'm just made it wasn't like a real serious thing, you know. But it was it was just something that was interesting that I did, <laughs> you know. I I did say yes and did get you know proposed to. Well, well, even when you talk about polygamy, though, we do watch you and be like, yo, man, did he got a nice little setup going on? Because mm-hmm. when you be at like Thanksgiving, yeah. and all your baby moms be there and your girlfriend and all your kids, that yeah. looks dope. A lot mm-hmm. of guys can't get that off. Yeah, you have to take care of everybody. And if everybody's happy and you're taking care of them and, and you're respecting them, then um, you can have a meeting like how I had. I had a, a, a can we all just get along meeting, mm-hmm. you know? And it's, it's just, it'd be better for all of us. How long did that take? <sighs> that probably just happened this year, just where, you know, everybody, the whole squad. Really? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I mean, you have to start to treat your family like a tribe if you, right. uh, you know, if you have other mothers or your children, um, the, the separatism starts to wear just on the family as a whole. And we all we all in it together, you know, so we might as well figure out how to coexist. And they 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 get along lovely laughing and talking and partying and dancing and chilling and shopping. And, you know, everything is everything is good because they, they're, they're good people, though, too. Mm-hmm. They're good people. And Cassie's a great woman. So what were they like? The OGs versus like the the, the newcomers? Mm-mm. No, oh. no, it wasn't oh. really nothing versus anybody. It was just, it was just making sure. It's just about honesty, mm-hmm. you know what I'm saying? And and just making sure like everybody, everybody's clear. And um, yeah, but it wasn't like we, there were no problems. Like everybody's very respectful as women, just as themselves. They're not really into, you know fighting or beefing like that. Yeah, you have to be honest. I can't see you on a boat somewhere on a yacht and I didn't know you were there. Then everything gets crazy. We got to just keep it open. Like, I don't understand that one if I was on a boat. (laughs) 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 You have visions of me being on a boat and yacht and I don't tell my girl? Oh my God, the 7030 has me out here like the worst. Ladies, let me explain something to y'all right now. I'm the best. I'm not the worst. I'm the best. You know what I'm saying? I've I've had my different things and point of views and stuff like that in the past, but I'm cured now. I'm right. love and everything is all right. There you go. Well, let's talk about the four because we've all been watching the show and we do like watching the four. Yeah. And I saw the first episode um, when you have to be very honest and one girl broke down and cried, but she did come back and say, you're going to sit front row in the Grammys when she performs. But before you do that, explain the four because a lot of people are confused with the concept of the four. Okay. It's like vocal Game of Thrones. Mm-hmm. Say the chairs are thrones. Mm-hmm. Say there's royalty, kings or queens in those four thrones. A challenger from another realm mm-hmm. gets to come and challenge them and call them out. So you have the four best singers we could find at that time. Mm-hmm. We start where all the shows finish. So we start with the actual four that w- that were the best out of all the auditions. So you guys picked the four already? Yeah, so we okay. picked the four. Then you could be at home sending your audition to the fourmusic.com. Then you could be on the show and you could challenge someone. So like there's, there's somebody, um, her name is Javaya. Okay. So say J- Javaya, you see Javaya up there um, and, and, you're, and you're like a singer from Canada or whatever. You could go, once you get past the judges, you come and perform for us. Once you get past the judges, then you could go and you could go to Javaya and say, I want to challenge you. Mm-hmm. And then they basically have like a, a singing battle, a like a rap right. battle. Yeah. So it's like a, a sing off and it's real it's real combative and you know, combative and also um So if Javaya lose, Javaya's off the throne. She's yeah. gone, she's out of here. Yeah. So if if if, if Tony challenges Javaya, so Tony is just somebody I made up. Right. And he beats Javaya, then he takes her seat. And Javaya's gone, no more on the show. Yeah, right. Damn it, man. For the yeah. people that aren't on the, the show. The first and... four that we started with, they're all gone. Oh, they're, they're gone already. Gone. Yeah, they're already, they're already yeah. gone. So that's what makes it such interesting TV. It's not the regular format. The genre's thoroughly disrupted. We have hip-hop on there. You know, I made sure that that was in the contract. <laughs> um, we have diversity, R&B, and um, it, it just feels more like us. Mm-hmm. It, it feels more like us. It feels more like the culture. And... Um, 
you know, we're free to do whatever we want, and, and, and we have a good chemistry with the team of people. But it's, it's, it's a real, it's, it's hard to sit down and watch some of these shows, um, and people really, really love the show. I love it. What made you want to do the photo? Because you don't need the money, and mm -hmm. you, 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 your time is money, so you, it's a commitment mm -hmm. to time. So what made you want to do it? I wanted to do it because if if I stay out of music too long, like it's it's like I I, I lose I lose my energy. Mm -hmm. I, if I if I stay away from coaching people and teaching people, um, the knowledge that that I have, you know, sometimes I feel like 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 you know the business is taking too much. And mm -hmm. so this was a great opportunity to return back to my roots and also in the vibe that I'm in. You know, the vibe I'm in is is really sharing and and trying to help people be the greatest that they can be. And so I thought the show was a great idea, and and it was an opportunity to come and bring diversity. I know I had an opportunity to come and bring diversity to prime time in these in these type of shows. And what was, what's the end game for the show? Like, what 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 is the the winner win or the four the top four mm -hmm. win? And how long is the season? Do they get record deals? Do they get money? Yeah, um, it's a six week special. Mm -hmm. You get a record deal with Republic mm -hmm. Records. Um, then you get us. The panel, you get me and Khaled and Charlie Walk and Megan Trainer. I saw you had to check Charlie Walk a little bit <laughs> on, on episode two. <laughs> so he he, he, he kind of got a little snappy with you. You had to remind you. He was like, remember you talking to Diddy? <laughs> yeah, nah. It's the, the, you know, the stuff with the show, it's intense in there because mm -hmm. it's, it's like a coliseum, so our audience is totally different. The audience energy and everybody's like, ah, and the testosterone is up and the hormones and it's crazy. And you know, um, you know, you know, he just he just felt like going a little too far. <laughs> <laughs> and it was all good. We reel it back in, and we, we keep it moving. Though, but um, you know, I think Charlie Walk is is he's he's that guy that you want to have your record in his hands. Mm -hmm. You know, and also I we have iHeartRadio. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, they they get to win that. That iHeart Radio Power Play. Yeah, that, that that program, the Cali program. That means you get played once an hour, every hour on for every a long station time. across right, America. Right, right, right. Yeah, yeah, but yeah. you know what I'm saying? You get your record fully supported. Right. If your record so, don't pop after that, you trash. Mm -hmm. Seriously. Yeah, and so um, so 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 we really feel like we have something the other shows don't have because me and Cali, we're gonna stay involved. We're gonna executive produce the album. We're gonna do their social media, blast them out there. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, it, it was something that, that, that was special. Callum made a comment on the for, uh, on the on the last episode. What, do you, what did he mean when he said this? I remember Diddy saying, if you get on your knees. What was he talking about? I said, if you get on your knees, you're supposed to cry. Oh. If, you're singing, if you're singing a song. Oh, okay. We segwaying into the Drink Champs interview <laughs> when you was with Nori and Fab and Jada and mm -hmm. everybody. They made a compilation video of you because they said you were sounding real suspect mm. on the on the interview. Yeah. Did you see that? Of course, nah. I didn't see it. No, nah, I didn't see it. You didn't see it. I saw the guy. Uh, Come yeah. on, yeah. man. You saw hey, that yo, on World hey, yo, Star hey, and hey, on yo, the check, gram. Check, check this out. When they started playing the game, the pause game, I would definitely. That came from Harlem too. By yeah, the way. came from Harlem. I definitely. Would say some oh my oh the crowd would be like whoa did he just say that <laughs> you know what I'm saying I don't play games y'all know you know what I'm saying I'm a grown man I don't play games but um yeah did the you compilation go? nah I was I was coming off of being in Miami a night of party and I don't really remember what I was saying <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm saying would you like a reminder yeah sure play some play, play. hey yo play listen, yo I, I love it all I love it all man. I like yeah. when you like this, Daddy. Yeah, yeah, when you put my daddy, yeah, I like when you oh, when you scrambling and scraping for shit. That was you scrambling. <laughs> you said, you said, <laughs> what? You said I like when you do it like that, Daddy. <laughs> when you scrambling and scraping for shit. <laughs> hey man. <laughs> like, I don't know what I was talking about. Hey. Nah, nah. I mean, I'm. You don't called, go back no, and no, look no. at that stuff and laugh. I mean, it's. I mean, it, it could be funny. I don't really be on it like that. Yeah, you know yeah, what I'm saying? Yeah, like, yeah. like. I'm you sure know, we can I'm, put Charlemagne's compilation against Diddy's. Compilation. Oh, we have a bunch. We put. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, <laughs> I, I also, I also don't do it because I know I'm. I know I'm bad at the game. Right. <laughs> 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 I know I say like reckless stuff out my mouth that's just not maybe you know adding up to with somebody who maybe somebody who's homophobic, but I'm not homophobic and I really don't you know care. You know what I'm saying? I just. 
But um, I'm bad at the game, and it's probably hilarious. I would love to see it. I would love to see the video compilation. It's hilarious. 50, yeah. 50 came up here, and he was giving you flack for the asking Fab to party. So you, he'll ask you, oh, he'll ask you to play it, play it, play the clip, man. Yeah, play the clip. Go ahead. Why won't you party with me for your birthday, man? I'm, I, yeah, we we party for my birthday before. You came to my party. And, and... No, but me and you ain't never really party, you know what I'm saying? I asked 50 about that, and he said you did the same thing to him. You asked him to take him shopping. Yeah, I thought he needed some clothes. <laughs> <laughs> what? I'm a nice guy. Yo, why, I mean, why are you with Fifth? Hey, yo. Why are y'all not? Hey, yo, I don't have no beef with, 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 with. I don't know why. With, with Fifth. He loves me. Hmm. He loves me. Do y'all really can't have see a beef? It? I mean, y'all can't see it. No, we can't see it. Y'all can't see that he loves me? But see, you really, hold on, you really think that's hate? You really, when you really break it down, you've been out here a long time. You know he loves me. I don't think he like it. You know he loves me. I don't think he like it. Okay. But why? But why not? Y'all just y'all both passionate. Y'all both. I don't know. I, I, yo, check this out. I don't. I don't know. Like I don't. Both the same. No, we are not. Okay. We, we are not, not the same. <laughs> but, I mean, we are not cut the from the same cloth. You guys work and work hard. Yeah, and 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 um, you know, I mean, I respect that. I don't. I don't never hit him with no, you know, nothing. I don't even think of no other man, man. Besides, if I'm thinking about another man, I'm thinking about uplifting. I'm not thinking about all that. All them nats. You know, they, they can't really touch me. Y'all at the end of the day, y'all see and y'all know what it is. Mm -hmm. You know, the the track record. Y'all know y'all know the business acumen. Y'all know the community service. Y'all know what I'm about, you know. And um when he does that, it's 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 like funny to me. I don't really take it personal. I know he has a different sense of humor and he's just not in my life. We don't have to never cross paths and um I will never say nothing negative about him, you know, because that's just not me. It feels like something must have happened though, like that we just don't know about behind the scenes. He loves me. That maybe a situation, a deal went bad. Nah, some, I don't know some, what it is. Sometimes, um, sometimes people that, that that feel like they don't like you and they act like that, they really love you. Like I'm not, I'm not, I'm not like you know just saying it to say you know. But I, guess I mean, like I mean, it's, some, it's it's something about me that has them on me all the time, and I'm not going nowhere. So, you you haven't given out a lot of money lately. You gave French uh two hundred grand mm -hmm. for his 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 charity. You yeah. donated money so to us. You for donated change for change. one hundred and fifty to us. Yes, for you, change for change. You almost gave the young boy a million dollar contract. That, no, 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 real? no. I did. <laughs> nah, nah, that wasn't real. Okay, the oh, young that man. Wasn't real. Yeah, 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 that wasn't real. Yeah, that wasn't real. You put it out there and then you took it back when the parents spoke. That never. No, 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 no. Why would I give a kid a million dollars for a picture? That don't even make. That's not even good for. They said it was a modeling contract. You for what? It ain't that much modeling well, in the put world. Put the pictures of my kids back in my pocket because I said if you gonna give me now, big nah. Right? Did yeah, that, yeah. Did that it, cause it problems just, at Sean John? Like all the other models, like yo, we been here. Where our million dollars? Nah, it, it it didn't it didn't happen. So um, yeah. So where did that come from? You saw you. I, I mean, it just comes from a story off the internet. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like the internet. That? You know, the internet is crazy, man. So now, we saw you at Mary J. Blige with her getting her star on the Hollywood Walk of Fame. And she told dope. a lot of uh, stories about herself and things that she's been going through in her life. And, of course, you have some great stories about coming up with Mary J. Blige, which you told also. So, you know, let's shout out to Mary J. Blige. You have shout out to Mary. Mary J. Blige. You said you used to pick her up in your, what did you have? I had a Volkswagen Rabbit. <laughs> and I used to pick her up from Slow Bombs up in Yonkers. And, you know, to, to, to remember... And I always remember her like getting into getting in my car, you know, cause freezing outside the way somebody gets in your car cold, mm -hmm. and and my heater wasn't working, and we trying to we trying to make sure that we could get to the studio, we have enough gas money, and then to see her there, see her get nominated for two Golden Globe awards, and then to be able to pre present her her star in Hollywood, um, which is just like is on the same block as mine, um, it was it was crazy, mm -hmm. it was uh it was a crazy like like life experience to be like, wow, if, if you really stay focused and you really, really go hard and really stick together, you know, we, we could do great things. And so it was just those two kids that was in that cabriolet, um, what's that, Rabbit? Yeah, rabbit. rabbit. Yeah, rabbit. Volkswagen <clears throat> Rabbit. Um, now, you know, we've we, we, we bending down over 
her star in Hollywood. Mm. It was it was a, just a beautiful moment, and I'm you know I'm so proud of. Her. Yeah, people. I, when I I posted that on my page because you know I, I got love for you and Andre and Mary, and people was like, "There go Diddy all up in the pictures." I'm like, y'all don't know the history. Yeah, yeah. Like, if you knew the history, <laughs> you'd understand why it's him, Andre, and Mary in, in that situation. Yeah. Hey man, people gonna say what they want to say. But me and Mary's one. thing, you know that that's something a little sacred. You know that's something that every. Um, you know, she asked me to do it and something I would have been there um, and been with her regardless because, I mean, that's my sister. We have a close relationship, so it's different than just an artist I worked with. Mm -hmm. How did you not be bitter when when, uh, when Andre fired you? Because y'all still break bread to this day. Mm -hmm. um, cause Andre get, works for him. That's what I just said. Yeah. Yeah, and, yeah. Um, I just, I mean, I wasn't bitter. I knew that it was a life lesson that I needed to learn. Um, I was scared, if anything. Because you know losing your job is kind of scary, but I was able to bounce back, get on my feet, get the deal with um, Arista, and and as he said in the documentary, um, he fired me and made me rich. Mm -hmm. You know, so I didn't have nothing to be mad about. You know, he gave me my freedom. He saw what was coming down the pipe before before I saw it, and he you know he he let me get out of there with Biggie and Craig Mack, and I could do nothing but love him. And he's only been a great mentor to me, and um, somebody that you know, I, you know, I always love and be indebted to. And what about the the Panthers? How how can you buy the Panthers? Is that a, a possible position? And what do we have to do as people to support? Um, the process has just started, so we I, I would be able to give more updates on that maybe like in two weeks. But one of the things I want to say is that it was it was never about me wanting to buying the Panthers, it was always about we. It was always about, like, we need a team. I jumped out there to make sure that they understood that that they have to consider, you know, some black ownership right now with 80%, 70% of the league being African-American. And it's just time. Like, if right now, we don't own nothing. And if, if we don't own nothing, then we don't have nothing. And, and and we have to make that change. And I feel like that shift is coming that that, that we have to make sure that we have, a, a, you know, a seat at the table. Have you put together an investment group? Yes. Put together an investment group. Um, and it's just going through it's just going through the process. I don't have anything to update on okay, right yeah. now. But yeah. But the thing is, I just feel like we as a community, we need a team. And so, you know, whatever it is, you know, it, it'll definitely be a collective. It won't be just like about me. It'll be a collective of people coming together. From from us and um, you know putting it down. That's another thing people are doubting. They're not gonna let no black person own an NFL team. It's it's a it's a lot of, mm -hmm. lot of rules, lot of regulations, lot of loopholes, you know. And you know, as I said, I'm just starting to go through the process. But I can understand why people feel that way, because it's definitely it's definitely a lot of loopholes that are in there. But um, you know, rules are made to be broken. Rules are made to evolve. And, you know, if somebody doesn't jump out there on it, then nothing to change. You know, they'll just, you know, keep on going and giving ownership to their boys, you know. Now, did you give Joe Budden $5 million for revolt? No. For revolt? Deal? I didn't give it. I don't, I don't, I don't know where the, um, where the, where these these numbers are coming from. <laughs> <laughs> Joe Budden already said that wasn't true. Yeah, yeah. He's like, I didn't get $5 million. Yeah, yeah. Nah, I'd say nah, that, too. Yeah. <laughs> somebody yeah, yeah. Yeah, nah, nah, that 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 didn't happen. Is that deal done? Is is not yet. Okay, not yet. You got a plan in place? Um, I'm trying to get it together. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? So you know, sometimes it, it just takes time. It's not like you go and do a deal really overnight. You know, I mean, you can, but it's, it's it's best to make sure that you know everything's right. And so if it, if it works out, it works out. You know, and um, I, I hope it works out. What's it like to work for Diddy now? Because I remember back in the day, that was the standard. Like, oh, you could never work for Diddy if you did this, if you mess up. Because, you know, you're known mm -hmm. for being tough yes. to work for. Has that changed as you've evolved? I mean, I, I, I still demand a certain amount of excellence. So, I, no, that definitely hasn't changed. I'm always pushing people to be great. I'm definitely like a boss that if you come and you work with me, then you could go and, you could go and be a president of any company that's out here. And... um. So, so I have that responsibility to make sure that 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 we stay evolving and stay great, you know, and most importantly, stay competitive, because that's one of the main things I want to represent is is just really being able to go 
and compete with the others, um, you know, and, and make sure that we get ours. I always wanted to know, <clears throat> in the last, let's say, 10 years or 15 years, did money ever get tight for Diddy? And the reason I ask is, it was about a, a, a good seven day where Diddy took commercial planes. And I was like, what? And you were filming, he was like, look, gas is high, I'm getting on this motherfucking commercial plane. Mm -hmm. I never knew if that was a joke, no, or if that no. was Diddy campaigning for something else, or if it was like, you know, hold on, I gotta, I gotta watch this for a second. Or maybe being smart. No, I had, I had like took a, a bloodbath in um sh with Sean John during the we all did during the recession, mm -hmm. and it was, it was just, you know, time to tighten up, you know, and um, it, that was like a, a crazy time, but you know, we made it through. Mm -hmm. You know, you just gotta recalibrate. Yeah, but. It was only it was only like seven days. It wasn't. It wasn't. It was, it was, <laughs> it was like. No, I'm gonna tell you. It was like. It was like six months. It was like a good six months. You know what I'm saying? I had to get up out of hole, and and that's part of it. That's part of the hustle, man. You got good days. You got bad days. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Is that what do you, you call so in the that? hole, Diddy? What's in the hole? For I had this? lost thirty. Thirty m m's. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. That's mm -hmm. a hole. That's a hole. Is that the reason why you work so hard and you continue to work? So you, so you. Um. Because it, of feelings it, like it, that. It's it's not it's not really about the money. Um. Right now, right now is really the opportunity, the opportunity to be, um, to to really be a factor in life and, and a factor in the world in a good way. You know, mm -hmm. um, when I get calls and entrepreneurs see me from Africa and Germany and, you know, in London, you know, black people from all over the world, when they, when, when they see it, the, the narrative changes, you know, and, and, and they see a successful man that looks like them and um you know and so that's what it is for me is 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 building great things so i could leave make sure i have infrastructure left as my legacy and also the teachings to show people you know how to do it and so that's that's you know what i'm on all the time whatever happened to sean john because I, I i thought sean john made stuff for us i seen a sean john store in the airport in atlanta, atlanta yeah atlanta airport yeah, sean john still popping mm -hmm. yes yeah, yeah sales is up okay. forbes list yeah sales is up <laughs> now i was uh we've been having some bad boy discussions lately so i'm glad you're here you know mace was on with angie martinez mm -hmm. and he said it was his pin that kept bad boy alive after big died and yeah. i dispute that people think i'm hating because they think i don't like mace but i just said i feel like it was your star power that kept bad boy alive I mean, I think it was a combination. I mean, it's definitely his pen. Like those, you know, he came up with the been around the world. More money, more problems. Can't nobody hold me down. You know what I'm saying? So that that's definitely true. I mean, I, I tell it to him all the time. Like he's one of the people responsible for my artistic career. But um, that's what it was about. That was his strength. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? I, if I could have Mace next to me to pen something, and I was already in because I had did the Benjamins, but I did that with the Locks. So that then can't can't nobody hold me down and other records came after that and we didn't know if if, if you know if the vibe I, they didn't we didn't know what, if the vibe was going to be right enough because we definitely had a quality control so even through myself I had to put myself through a quality control and after the Benjamins um I, kn I knew I could do it and I knew just the way me and Mace talked back and forth like the way we both was from Harlem and kind of slurred our words sometimes I knew that you know that that there was a there was a cadence and a vibe mm -hmm. and a DNA that could be developed. So from the producer side, and um, yeah, May stepped up and knocked them things out the park. Don't you think I'll be missing you was the setup for that though? Even though it was a a, a tragic record, I'll be missing you came um, after Can't Nobody Hold Me Down and the Benjamins. Um, yeah, the majority of the success is is because of you know that record right there on a mm -hmm. worldwide level because it was like the first number one hip hop you know single worldwide ever and it was really like one of the first times that the world was exposed to hip hop on a mainstream station mm -hmm. so you could be in Bolivia mm -hmm. and that thing was just coming on in between like the hottest groups in Bolivia and it really changed the scope of hip hop and opened up the doors that record right there and and definitely um kind of it 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 gave it it gave us a little bit of life that we needed cuz we definitely was all about the feeling like all about to quit it was just like too much you know and um cuz ain't nobody else had ever experienced nothing like that in music 
And so when Missing You came out, it was that right there was was one of the turning points because it was it, it really just showed the vulnerability. And so I was able to go do that with other records and, and have success also. Was Mesa a better artistic fit for you than than Big? For you as an artist, I, wasn't it a point where Big was executive producing your solo yeah. album? Yes. Yeah. Um, no, I would just say that they different. You know what I'm saying? I, I, w- I would say that when when I look at us, I look at us as as a whole. So when you saw the Bad Boy Family tour, that's, that's the way I look at us. I don't mm-hmm. really look at it separately. Me and Big, we had a separate friendship, you know, and, you know, I look at that like that. As, a, as an artist, you know, um, I, I just really looked at them individually. How much, you, how much <clears throat> of your solo album was done before Big Pass? It was called Hell Up in Harlem, and it was like 70% done. Wow. And then um, I was like, I can't do this, and... um. Then I made Missing You, and then it was called No Way Out. Now, you know, we had, I'm sure you heard everybody talking about the five best lyricists on Bad Boy. Mm-hmm. Now, let's, let's, let's break this down correctly, mm-hmm. right? Because right. I'm glad, you, we, you're Here the person we that we've been waiting to That's hear right. weigh in on this, right? It was It's about lyrics, bars, delivery, nothing else. Not star power, not album sales, nothing. And it's not even a diss to Mace. I just said let I don't, him do do let him do his yeah. list. But I haven't I haven't explained what it is yet. Okay. You're leading the witness. I haven't said yeah, I, leading the witness over. I there. said that Mace wasn't a top five <laughs> lyricist on Bad Boy, and I disagree. Not saying he's whack. I just Bad Boy was stacked, right? But so Mace I, got busy. And who, it was, was, and who was your top five? Big uh-huh. Kiss, Styles, Chic, Black Rob, and then I had G Dep at six and Mace at seven. Yeah. Yeah, y'all. Tight entitled to your opinion. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> I'm definitely not going to step out with that. You know what I'm saying? So, because right, so, it's like. So, with Mace being a top five? Yes, he would be. I, Where I would agree. he land, though? Sean I'm, Perez had him at five. He'll he'll be in the top five. I think he's in that top yeah. five, too. <laughs> he'll so be in the top five. <laughs> yeah, that's it. I, said, I, think Mace, I think people don't respect Mace because they hear the the foo foo fluff fluff dance song, but they forgot how lyrically nice he was. I think people forget how nice Black Rob was. Mace, yo, yo, check this out. Mace was leading the way. Like, like, so Mace was the, 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 you know, um, Jadakiss and Styles there and Sheik, they kind of like laid back. If you know their, their energy, they kind of laid back. And so, you know, Mace is, Mace is, is, is turned, you know what I'm saying? Especially back then. And, um, you know, so his, he was leading the way with a lot of the freestyles that was out, that was coming out, you know, and, um, just just really keeping everybody rapping together. So he was the one that was like kind of setting the bar for all the other young guns that came mm-hmm. after um, Big. You know, and I mean, that, that's a real time. And, and he was knocking it out the park. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? And so. After the Bad Boy reunion tour, have you guys decided just as a collective, everybody reunited to do anything else? Um, we haven't talked about it. Any more ventures coming out of that? I mean, you you... You never know. We haven't talked about it. We we all had a great experience. And s- sometimes you just want to leave the game on top, you know. And so that's where we at right now. We know we we honestly know we have some unfinished business, you know, in London and in Africa. But um, you know, I I I think that what we did in the U.S. I, I think that that we sealed it up just right. You know, anything else would be just you know messing now, with the I'm, legacy. I'm shocked that you still even want to create music when you had the era that we're talking about mm-hmm. now, like. Because what can compete with that? And that was just a rap that we just mentioned. Yeah, you know, times change. And if you don't change with the times, then, you know, you're talking about what you did in the 90s. And um, so you always have an opportunity to, to be authentic and be yourself and, and make music. And there's a lot going on out here, but that doesn't mean... You know, you have to get pulled into a, a certain style or mm-hmm. whatever it is, you know. And um, but I think that you know we 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 in a different a different time. Hip hop is 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 more diverse, and and there's there's a, there's a wave going on that you know people have to understand. When the punk rock wave came out, a lot of people didn't understand it, you know. Um, and you know, so for right now, I know it's not the traditional hip hop, but but you know these 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 kings and queens out here is talented. They not they not like not they not not talented. I mean your kids love it, and and that's what music is about. That's what hip hop is about. Who's on so, the bad boy now? Who's on bad boy? 
Um, my son, mm -hmm. Christian, Cassie, and Quincy. French is not on bad boy anymore. Who? French. French. Yes, French. French. I'm sorry. The, what about Machine Gun Kelly? Machine Gun Kelly, yeah. Mace had a good idea. He was like, he wanted to get with Christian and... Um, I, I was more talking about... Um, the new bad boy. Oh, okay. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, and also, that they have... Um, you know, MGK has a deal with... We, we're, it's through Bad Boy Interscope. Okay. Yeah. Mace said he want to get with Christian and help uh, help help his, help him. Yeah, yeah. He definitely should get with him, and I know they talked about it. Mm -hmm. I look forward to that. When you heard Unforgettable, did you hear that was a hit when you first heard it? Yeah. You, you heard it immediately? Yeah, yeah. Um... French had been really searching for a hit for a minute. And and when I heard that one, I was like, yo, you finally got one. This 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 gonna get you where you wanted where you wanna be. You're gonna go all over the world with this one. And um, it worked out. It got him his own Ciroc flavor. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> French vanilla. French. Why why do you think people still have such a fashion fascination with big and pock stories? Cause you see like it's always a new documentary or a new something all the time. I mean, it was a movie. I ain't gonna lie to you. It was a movie. The movies aren't really even exaggerating. You know, it was it was just a crazy time, um, and so I I think that's really intriguing to people because it was it was so it was so real. It was like so dangerous, mm -hmm. and it was like you know we was we was all just living on an edge that I don't even think you know people really have the stomach for mm -hmm. right now. You know what I'm saying? Um, it's still unsolved. And so there's still questions people have, so they're still doing documentaries, trying to figure out. But it doesn't help with healing, though, does it? Like, it's like always, I'm, like, literally, it's always a new big Pac documentary. Yeah, nah, nah, yeah. Well, you know what it is? It's like we're a part of history, and right now is is, is like they you know, our history is, is it, it matters because cause we want to know, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Younger kids want to know what went on because they, they hear about Tupac and Biggie. It's such an, they, they grew up hearing their names, their names, their names, and then, you you go on a search to get as much information as you can, mm -hmm. and you know every there'll be many documentaries and many movies because both of them had such a such diverse personalities. Right. You know. Somebody sent me this picture yesterday. You remember this this night? I yeah. Said, that's like, crazy. That's, that's Pac and Big a bad boy C, D Rock's Junior Mafia. Like yeah. that's crazy. I posted this yesterday. Like I don't understand how it went from that to. The craziness it became, and he even got a "I'm a bad boy" T-shirt on. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I think the I think in the movie it was depicted the way it was, you know. In the, in the Tupac movie, I know some some people said they didn't rock with it, but um, as far as the storytelling, as far as what it was, as far as the big interaction and how things went left, that's that's how it went down. How much how much of the whole story your your legacy do you want to tell while you're still here to tell it like we saw the documentary mm -hmm. but like how much do you want to tell oh yeah I'm, I'm gonna tell it all <laughs> i'm gonna tell it all you know i don't i i've lived an exciting life i think it'll it'll do well on the big screen oh so diddy. you gonna there's, there's gonna be a diddy movie yeah, one day. Oh, wait, 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 wait. I, Charlamagne, I plan on being great, man. You are great. <laughs> I plan on having You're movies not, made about me. About. I plan on there being <laughs> statues and different things like that. You know what I'm saying, man? Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. How, how did you and, uh, I know one time you and Drake were rocky. How, how was that first conversation when y'all got back cool? I, I, you know, he did a, a a song on the Lil Wayne mixtape. You mentioned he was at your house. We see videos of him at your house. Mm. How did that conversation come back around? Mm. You know, we just bumped into each other and just kicked it. Just sat down and kicked it, two men. And, um, you know, had some, some real talk and kept it moving. It wasn't wasn't no need to be the end of the world, you know. And um, I, I didn't have no malice towards them. And it was just, a, you know, one of those nights. Right. So we moved past it as men. And we was cool before. That's why everything went down, because, you know, and then sometimes brothers have scraps, you know what I'm saying? And and we got to be able to move past it. We got to be able to have scraps with each other, and then move past it. You know, something happened in your life that made. Did, yeah, I want to know. Did you go? Did you go like, to anger management or something? Yeah, something like, happened in Diddy's life. That like what happened? Diddy's was it spiritual? A, which is a good thing. It's a great thing actually. But it's something happened that just Diddy just turned and became love. Yeah, um, man. I think I was also like going through like a stressful time too. You know. Um, probably like two, three years ago, and I was getting everything out of my system. Mm -hmm. And I mean, if you've been there, you you understand that if, if you're like a 
person that has to always be on the, like the defense and mm -hmm. and you know be be ready. Then then it's, that's the energy that you bring. You carrying around with you. And um, I mean, I just once I sat down and had a talk with myself, you know, I just I just love love. You know what I'm saying? It, it just it just connected with me. It was just like anything else is a waste of time. On the defense with who though? You top of the food chain. Who? who? Yeah, yeah, and that, and that makes you on the. You yeah, have to be on the, the defense. The you you defending your throne. Yeah, I mean, you okay. just have to. You have to have a guard up, man. You mm -hmm. you have to protect your person. You know what I'm saying? It's rough out here. You can't give everything to the game. You know, and so, so, um, you know, I, I looked at the game from my history as, as as being very antagonistic. You know what I'm saying? You know, with our crew, a crew, this, that, and the other. And you know that's a part of growing up. You you evolve and you see things differently. And um, and so I I think that's what it is. And and then just you know getting closer, more of a connection to God, but being honest with yourself on like, yo, how do I want to be seen? How do I want to make people feel? You know, right. what, what's what's the truest thing to me? Because that 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 over there that ain't true. You know what I'm saying? And so I was able to get get things pointed in the right direction. And I I'm, I appreciate you commenting on it. But you've always had a connection with God, though. Even with the, the Steve Stout situation when you yeah. hit him, it was over God, technically. <laughs> no, I would say it was. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I mean, God has always been in my life. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but, um, you know, I had, I had my days, and, and, and that's what, you know, that's, that's what life is about, mm -hmm. being able to go through your low points and your high points, and in and, and those times, when I would act out like that, um, that was just, that was the environment I was in. That's mm -hmm. the that's the way it was feeling out here. Mm -hmm. You know, people getting punched in their face every day. <laughs> mm -hmm. Every day somebody's getting punched in their face. So I figured, why don't I be the first one to punch people in their <laughs> face since the punching in the face is gonna start yeah. at some time. Mm -hmm. And um, that was just the climate, it wasn't, you know, it was, it was, it was just the climate that was out there, so. I definitely um, tripped and fell a couple of times. What about the, the UCA, UCLA coach and J. Cole? Did you reach out to them and smooth things over with them? Yeah, I did. Yes, I put all of that in my past. <laughs> you can bring up all 20 different <laughs> things, Charlemagne, and it's in my past. <laughs> it's in my past. I want to be an example of a man that evolves. It feels like the world needs a lot of love right now. Too. Yeah, and it does. Going on, mm -hmm. We have to be a lot more united. Yeah, and we got to let things slide, though, too. You know, um, I wouldn't let nothing slide. I let I let so much slide right now because it's just not worth it. Like that has nothing to do with my life. I came in here by myself. I'm gonna leave here by myself, you know. And I'm a child of God. And and anything else, I can't. It's a waste of time for me right now. My time is precious. I can't have my time being I'm beefing with you over here, or I'm not happy to see you, or I'm not happy to be here mm -hmm. in the room with you guys. Like I'm happy to be here. You know what I'm saying? I'm happy to see y'all. I haven't seen y'all. This is like, you know, we're we're all an extended family, you know, of each other. So when I come in the room, I, I, that's the way I I want it to feel, cause that's genuinely what's in my heart. So we get invited to the New Year's Eve party next year. Yeah, yeah, okay. definitely. Listen. So what is the I got invited this year. I got invited this year. Yeah. So listen. Why? Why are you? What, what you doing? I invited like, y'all this year. It gets crazy over you can there. Invited though. every year. Though. Okay. Okay. <laughs> 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 this is the most epic party. I was with Seven Streeter over the weekend, and she was telling me it was like the best party she's ever been to mm -hmm. in her life. Mm -hmm. And people were saying this year in particular was like the best one. Yes. So. Needless to say, do you ever look around and, and go, "Who are these people in my house?" It's time for them to. No, no, I've been blessed to meet a lot of people. Did, I, I didn't say that this year, and I think that was the, I, w I was really careful about everybody that I was inviting and wanted to make sure I had a lot of family and true friends around me. And also wanted to have all my family, all my kids, the mothers of my children, my girlfriend there. It just felt like, you know, I finally got my tribe together. And, and then I leveled up on the production. I just like, you know, I took the production up a little bit. I wanted to give people like a great experience going into 2018 mm -hmm. and, you know, Ciroc and Delion was flowing, of course, and we had a great night, fireworks. It was just a real cool vibe. It was a real black excellence vibe. And it, 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 just, it just felt good to see so many people get dressed up and so many people to be doing good. You know, it was a, definitely a time where a lot of people in the room are, are, are doing good for themselves, really building their careers. Right. 
and could take care of themselves, you know. So it was it was that type of vibration in there. Was this the first year people brought their kids? Because I don't recall seeing like yeah, I know uh, Khaled had his son there, Fab had his kids. Was this the first year of that? No, no, we always had have a kid friendly zone, and we put them in another wing oh, okay. or something after a wing. like two, yeah, <laughs> after two two a.m. Mm-hmm. or something. But yeah, it's yeah, I think it's important that like during the countdown, you. you I mean, I want to be around my family, you know. Is it weird living in L.A.? Mm-mm, no, no, I love it. It's it's a it's 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 a great quality of life for, for my kids. Um, you know, I always miss New York, but you know, I'm I'm here once a month. It just it's, it's good for me, so I could slow down and and I could create. That's one of the things I really want to get back to. Like, is you know, I've been tightening up all of the companies business-wise, making sure I'm putting in the right leaders. I'm really trying to build a super team right now of executives that I could really get money with, that they could be incentivized. If they, if, if I make money, they make money, you know? And, and I really, I'm looking for executives like I used to look for artists. Mm-hmm. So I'm like, like transferring my head over mm-hmm. into, oh, instead of making a record, I'm, I'm, I'm making a business plan and putting the same type of creativity in there. And, you know, for the future, I have to have the, the best team around me, people that are, that are, that are capable um, and, and, and really, really, really brilliant and, and great at what they do. And, and then that'll free me up to be able to just to, to be more creative. Because when you're creative and, and, and you, you having to be bogged down with business sometimes, it kind of takes away. So this, this is a, a year that I'm going to be real creative. I'm gonna, the, the show is off to a great start. Um, you know, um, and we also add the can't stop, won't stop. So we, mm-hmm. I, th- I think we, we setting up everything, setting up the pieces in the right way, you know, and um, focused. What well, lifestyle Miami? choices have you made? I see you drinking the, the the green juice. I see you on Instagram with the, I don't know what kind of machine that is. You be running in? <laughs> yeah, that's an Alter G machine. That's an anti gravity machine. Um, and you know, I had a knee operation, and so in order to get back. I can't. I can't really. I'm not supposed to run and pound them. Mm-hmm. Right. It's and so need. and so they made this machine that that you could just run on like twenty percent of your body weight, anywhere from twenty percent to a hundred percent, and it, and it fluctuates and it, it helps to get you back in that rhythm and get your legs up underneath you. Um, but j- just due to my schedule, that that's the thing I'm fighting with right now on trying to make sure that I have enough time to take care of myself. Mm-hmm. And, and make sure that I have enough time to work out, and and the food thing, the food thing is hard. I ain't gonna lie. Yeah, especially I love when you it. got salt bay around you every yeah. damn day. Like that fried chicken. Yeah, I love to eat. <laughs> I love to eat. I was saying the other day, like you know, I yo yo, I go up and down, and I was like, I gotta really, I gotta really make sure that I find out because we all have different allergies in us. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? And and I was like, it's something that's that's you know puffing me up every now and then and puff up and slim down. I know a lot of people out there go through it, so I just want to let y'all know I'm with y'all. But you forever puffy, I, though. And I appreciate it. <laughs> <laughs> now, some people have wheat allergies. They don't yeah, know it. Some, yeah. yeah. They have no idea until you have to cut those things out. Yeah. Because I'm about to do this detox starting on Saturday. I'm nervous, but I guess I'll find out all of that when I do it and yeah. add things back. Are I'm you done. getting sleep? Because you're notorious for not getting sleep. Yes, I'm definitely getting more sleep. You know, I'm getting more sleep. I, I I would like to get more, but um, yeah, I'm I'm all the way in on on taking care of myself. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? This 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 has to be, you know, I went from me to we, but then I have to have a section and some time just for we for me, so I could just be selfish and I can make sure I I I really like zone into that. Cause even with changing over your nutrition, you you have to have time to really study and understand it yourself. Absolutely. So like like that's becoming one of my new hobbies. You know. But it, it it definitely you know it, it takes time it takes time and and just and I know everybody knows but you know the greatest wealth is your health for real we can't do nothing mm-hmm. unless uh, unless you're right. What made you gravitate towards Khaled as as a person? Um, I, I've known Khaled for like over 15 years, and I just I, I just love always loved his energy, and you know I I thought he would be a a, a good um, partner, a good person on my side, so. I could stay in my in my zone and 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 just speak when you know I need to speak, mm-hmm. and I don't have to have the whole show on me, and um, you know I and and just just what he's representing and what he's doing right now, and I think he has a connection to um you know to the artists to younger artists, mm-hmm. and um I think all of us together combined 
you know, it makes for a great show. Khaled has great positive energy, too. Yeah. A lot of energy. Yeah. Are you doing a Miami marathon? Because there was some rumblings about you doing another marathon. No, no. I'm not doing <laughs> that. No, no, no. Where did that rumor come from? <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. I mean, it's a lot of rumors right now. Yeah, we see. A lot of rumors. <laughs> well, no marathons ever again? Um, he got not for me. What's the business? Well, What's the church announcements? Me. Me. Church announcements. Oh, yeah. Let's hear this. Oh, okay. <laughs> What's the business? What's the church announcement? Nah, nah, nah. That's okay. <laughs> what? Well, the four every Thursday at eight p.m. Yeah, on Fox. Yeah, make yeah. sure you tune in. Yeah, the 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 business was that make sure everybody when y'all tune in tomorrow, I mean when y'all tune in tonight, eight p.m. Everybody tune in. We have the the four viewing parties all over the nation, you know, and um, make sure you have your own. Make sure you have some Ciroc, sell sell some Delion. Be be by your television at like seven fifty. It's going down. Let's use hashtag the four. I'm going to be checking everything live. So I want to know y'all opinions, especially in New York. Let me know what time it is. Hashtag the four. Tell me whatever you feel about the show. And, um, you know, we're going to keep on banging. They had the toughest battle on last week. It kind of hurt my heart. With Saeed. Yeah. Because I really liked him. He's from Brooklyn. I'm yeah. from Brooklyn. With a fat dude. Yeah. But it was a great battle. I didn't know who was going to win that one. I think so far that's been the toughest battle. Yeah. Nah, he got washed. Which one are you talking about when the when the, when the, when the big dude battled uh yes. the guy that could really sing he the guy did a that great challenged job him too. He said the guy that could really sing yeah that guy killed him the guy that came and challenged him I thought they with both the vest did a great on job. oh no 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 he was and he I like was, dude. he sang uh, that Imagine Dragon song <laughs> and I like he the fact that people dude. can come no, on no. there and have accolades they don't have to be like brand new to yeah. the business so they can have written and you know done other things and won awards but they still can compete yeah and you could actually be sitting at home. And, and watching the four, and you can send your audition to the four music dot com and be on the show the next week. That happens this oh, week. That's how. That's wow. how quick it happens. Yeah. Dion so. Warwick's granddaughter was on there. I saw you had to um, give some real harsh <laughs> advice, even though Dion Warwick was in the audience. Yeah, it's, it's all out of love. All of, all <laughs> of the criticism in it is out of love, and I think that's a, another thing about the show that feels so great is you could tell we're we're we're, we're really trying to help the people. Mm-hmm. We're really trying to tell them the truth and give them some advice. Even if they're they they're good or they or they're bad, you know. Mm-hmm. One quick question: If they don't make it right to the end, can you sign them if you wanted to? Like the people that don't win. Yes. So they're not locked into anything. Come on, Diddy's probably one of the best business people you know. I'm you just know asking. To get on that show <laughs> if he wants. You get first dibs. You get first right like refusal. First look or something. First right refusal. Yeah, yeah, we definitely get first look. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Ain't nothing wrong with that. All right. Well, we thank you for joining us. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Everybody, tune into the four on Fox, 8 p.m. 8 p.m. Everybody, keep tuning in. Hashtag the four. Thank y'all so much for your support. And um, God bless y'all. Happy New Year. Yes, the sir. Breakfast Club. All right, it's the Breakfast yeah. Club. It's.